Welcome back everybody to the wide body build. Here I am with that front bumper that we had modified and I realized with the big splitter I want to put on there that that bottom portion just sticks down too much. So I cut it back with the grinder and here I am cleaning up some of the body work that was left over from when I originally had created it. Get the bumper back on the car and then mark it where it needs to be trimmed. I go ahead and do that with the grinder since I already had it out. I get the suspension set to where I think is ride height, and then I go around with a tape measure, just checking a bunch of different points on the car to see if it's sitting level and equal. One of the things that we had an issue with last time was making sure that we got everything square and equal side to side, front to back. So this time I took a little bit uh, extra time to measure some uh, key points, uh, points that haven't moved, like the bottom corner of this fender to the ground. Uh, I'd also pulled a measurement from the mirror to the ground and then we did some measurements off of the back uh, at the tail light area uh, what I'm gonna do now is build some blocks and anybody who knows Audi's know they have these uh, like jack points under here and this is plastic block under here and what I'm gonna do is I've measured those they are about four inches from the ground in the front and four and a half inches from the ground in the back and that is the driving height so what I'm going to do is cut some wood blocks, raise the car up on the suspension, shove those blocks under there, and then set it down onto those so that it cannot move. Um, and that'll give us a set point that we can be sure that it's exactly the same all the way around off the ground in the future. So as we build all the body kit, we're going to build off the floor up to it, and we'll know everything's equal at that point. All right, so here's the blocks I cut. You can see these top ones are the four and a half, so these go in the back. And then these other ones are the four inch and they will go up front. So what I'm going to do now is lift the suspension up, shove these blocks under there, lower it back down onto them. And then we'll know that it's all at an equal distance and uh, everything will be square when we go to, you know, measure up from the floor. I set all the blocks in place and then I get into the car to get the controller out for the air suspension. Lift it up high enough just to get the blocks under and then I come back around and lower the car down onto those blocks. I do it kind of slow to make sure that everything's landing in the appropriate spot. Now that I've got it lowered onto the blocks, I do one more check, final walk around with this tape measure, just to make sure that all the points are where I think they should be. And it looks pretty good. Since the original mounting points are gone after trimming the edge of the bumper, I need to make some way to hold this bumper up, so I use a couple of self-tapping screws and a drill and go ahead and screw the ends of the bumper to the fender. I'd been asked a bunch of times how wide the car actually is, but I really had never checked, so today I decided to lay a couple bars against the tires, and then I could stretch that tape measure from the inside of one bar to the inside of the other and get our measurement. So I laid these two steel rails on the floor, you could bolt these down. I don't think I'm going to need to because I can just bump them up against the tire. If I end up moving things uh, where I want to measure front to back or something like that, you know, it would probably be a good idea to mount them to the floor and maybe even put a tape measure on top of each one. Uh, but for right now, I'm just looking for the track width on the outside so that I can build the, the front lip piece and in uh, the yeah. split. So right now, I'm just measuring out to see about how wide that's going to be. It looks like we're right around 87 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and get the board cut and laid on the floor and then we can start mapping out the shape of it. I cut a bunch more wood blocks all at four inches because I decided that was going to be my height for the sides, the front splitter, pretty much everything other than the very back of the car. I get all the blocks laid out in the general area and then I grab my three quarter inch particle board which I'm going to use for the base of the splitter just to make a mold. I use a tape measure to get the board centered as possible, and then I use a little bit of blue tape to lay out a line that I think looks okay for the beginning. Using the blue tape as my cut line, the jigsaw comes out and I trim off that corner. You can see that I transferred the board that I cut off to the other side and taped it down. I use that board as a template just to make sure that I had the same shape side to side. Now I bust out the jigsaw again, trim this corner off. I also go ahead and do one final check just to make sure everything's square. I grab my little rotary sander just to get rid of the marks where I entered and exited the plywood with the jigsaw. Those little marks just kind of looked out of place and I wanted to clean up the edges and make everything nice and round. Now that I've got the splitter base where I want it, 
I wanted to put a couple of screws in it just to make sure it didn't shift or move around since I'm going to be bumping into this and building kind of off of it for the flares. Sometimes it can get tricky to find a spot to measure from. So you can see here I am with a yardstick and a tape measure trying to find a good way to measure where this tire opening needs to be. Now that I got a general idea of how big I wanted the flare edge to be, I cut a piece of hardboard with this little notch and it rests on the back side of that splitter. That gives me a reference point that I can count on every time side to side. I take my hardboard and rest it on one of the four inch blocks, the front of the splitter and up against the tire. I then take a permanent marker and I run it right along the edge of the tire all the way around both sides front and back. And that gives me an outline of the tire on this hardboard and gives me an idea of how big the opening needs to be cut. I used my little air saw to cut the circle out. You could have used anything, a jigsaw would have worked just fine too, but I love the air saw, it leaves a really nice sharp edge. I was really happy how this inside cut turned out, so I made a little tool with a block of wood and a permanent marker, and that allowed me to make this really nice tight radius where both edges matched almost perfectly. I'll make a video and post it in the tips and tricks portion of this channel. That way you guys can see how to make one of these tools too. They definitely come in handy for lots of different things. Now we're at the point where we can actually start forming up a flare. Well everybody, that concludes today's video. We're going to build these flares next and I want to share a lot of information with you. So I'm going to cut this one a little bit short and we'll do an in-depth on this next video for the entire flare process. As always, feel free to leave your questions and comments below and I'll try to get those answered. Also, don't forget to follow the build. Give me a thumbs up so I know you like what we're doing and I'll see you guys on the next one.